Greetings to all of my learned magic friends out there on YouTube. Welcome back to another episode of Erudite Magic. I am pumped for this episode. I was at Abbott's Magic Convention in Colon, Michigan, the 83rd annual magic get together for the first time for me. While I was there, I decided to interview some of the top magicians there about books that they would recommend to you my erudite viewers. We're going to hear from David Williamson, Lear Menor, Jeff Hobson, Mike Caveney, Eric DeCamps, and Jessica Jane. I'm going to place some timestamps down below in the description so that you can jump around to hear the advice that you want from all of the world-class magicians that I interviewed specifically for you. Jeff Hobson, who has agreed to talk to us a little bit about his magic book collection and might have a story for us here about books and whether they're important or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With books, uh, obviously, when I was a kid, I mean, books from the library, my very first a book that I uh, got from the library uh, was uh, the uh, Amateur Magician's Handbook and the Classic Secrets of Magic by Bruce Elliott. Um, and a few others, and that's really what sort of solidified my love of the library. And then eventually over the decades, I've, uh, oh, I think I've about three or three and a half thousand books or so on, on magic and pamphlets and this and that. So, okay, where were we? Oh, yeah, so about the books. So uh, eventually I, I, had, I started to move from Vegas, and I said, I'm, you know, this is a lot of books. And I, I pretty much have read them all, and I know what they're all, and I use some as reference, and after now, I realized that I looked at my watch, and I said, oh, look, it's two minutes past a freckle. I said, I'm going to be at a very important uh, part of my life where I said, I, I can't be hauling around books anymore, and I don't want my family to deal with it. So I said, I'm going to get rid of them all and let them filter back into the magic community, which I did, except I sold them all except for three books which I kept. Uh, one uh, is special because it's the person that it's written by is very special, but, but even just as important that his thinking as a scientist uh, applied to his magic and the way he performs, it's just sheer brilliancy. And that is none other than Gene Anderson and the book by Gene Anderson. Uh, he's a great, great friend. Uh, and, uh, you know, he wrote a big, hey, to Jeff and all that. So, so I really can't get rid of it because if I sold it, it'd be really tacky. But no, seriously, the reason I got it is, is brilliant. First page to last page, anyone who get it should study it. Every word he's got, it's a scientist approach on teaching magic, which is crazy detailed and good. Okay, so that's number one. Two, good friend of mine, Ron Wilson. Ron Wilson, The Uncanny Scott. If you can find a copy, you might not. If you can find a copy, it's going to be expensive, and you, it's worth every penny. Uh, he was a great friend. Every routine in there is um, just brilliancy. I mean, beyond. I mean, it's sort of subtle, too. You think, oh, yeah, I know this. It's just a chop cover. No. It, if you study it, you go, oh, I didn't know. Same thing with me. I had the book for like, you know, 20 years. Hey, thanks, Ron. You're a good buddy. And then I said, oh, yeah, that's all right. That's And then you study and you go, oh, my gosh, I didn't know how good this was. So it's brilliant. If you're going to do stand-up routine or close-up, it's great. And then the other one that I still have is the complete works of Derek Dingle. There are some things in there, just goes beyond great, and his techniques are wonderful, and I knew him, and uh, he combines simplicity with super great subtleties and sleight of hand, and makes for some great commercial routines. So if you're going to be a professional magician, those three books you can ride your whole career around and be very famous and make a hell of a lot of money. Is that a good answer? Absolutely. Thank okay. you. So I'm here with uh, Lear Menor. Well, he's agreed to tell us a little bit about what he feels the importance of books are and, and some, of, some of his favorite books. If you could just tell us a little bit about yourself for the viewers who may not already know you. I'm sure there are lots who do, mm -hmm. but for, the, for those who don't, just tell us uh, a little bit. I come from Israel. I'm in the business since uh, I started learning real magic in 1985 when I was in university. But as a child, I also read uh, Bruce Elliott, Magic as a Hobby, when I was like 12 years old. And it was the only magic book in Hebrew. There was another one that uh, was translated to Hebrew by Jay Marshall, the big book of uh, magic. And that's all we had. 
And then I found another one, 131, uh, by Will Dexter. Uh, again, these are really uh, books for beginners, but in every book for a beginner, you will find something really strong, like the magic square is in 131 uh, tricks for uh, uh, beginners. Uh, it's a funny name in Hebrew, Ta'lulim. It's like uh, low uh, kind of magic. And uh, so I use the magic square until uh, today. So uh, when I become uh, a grown person and I learn in uh, the university, we had to learn English. And I didn't want to learn English, but because I started learning uh, magic, I have no choice because all the books were in English. So I bought a few books that I found in Israel. They're called Fulves or Fulves uh, books. Uh, uh, the mental magic, the silk magic, uh, uh, self-walking, uh, car tricks, etc. It was only in English. So I sat with a dictionary and I learned and I learned and I learned. Of course, I didn't understand most of the effects. But from time to time, you catch something and you learn. And because you learn so hard, it becomes a second nature for you. And uh, I also bought the book when I saw Paul Harris. I got all of his books. When I bought a, a, a David Roth, I bought a book, although I don't do coin magic. I do more uh, mentalism, but I, I like to learn uh, a lot. And I think that uh, uh, watching a video will help you understand if the effect is good for you. And then reading the book will help you much more because you will get more insight uh, information. My favorite uh, books, uh, which I always uh, recommend, if you do corporate events, you must have the book by Bill Harris and Paul Harris, The uh, Secrets of the Astonishing Executive or something like that. The, the title is too long for my English. Uh, uh, all the beginner's books are really good because the, the magic is very direct, very focused. So you skim and you skip and you see something uh, good. Of course, Carol Fox, I love his books, but again, because everything he made, some stuff very simple. And simple magic is uh, very direct. I just did a few things you just saw. You saw the reactions of something that uh, some ladies over here, uh, how did they react to so for, so for some magic uh, or more uh, mentalism? It was more mentalism. Uh, of course, you need to buy uh, Ken Weber for two reasons. Why? Uh, once, because it's a great book. And second, even three reasons. Second, because he's my best friend. And the third one, because he mentioned my name three times and I'm always uh, proud of it uh, to be in uh, the book. Uh, so uh, for all the card magicians, go back to Paul Harris. Again, it's me. You you are much better. It's just my opinion. And we have hundreds of books. Uh, and you can find uh, a lot of ideas in the old books, although it's very difficult to read them. But the old books, have the, the classics are really, really, really good. Uh, this is what is coming up uh, to my mind at this minute. And I want to do a full interview, which I will be prepared with all the books. The, and some of them can help you in magic, which are not uh, magic books. Thank you so much, Leo. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. As you're hearing, some of these books are older and maybe slightly out of print. So if you're going to look for them, you should check out Don's Magic and Books, who's sponsoring this episode. This week, Don is offering you an incredible 15% off with coupon code colon at checkout. No, not that colon. The Abbott's colon. You know, the get together. If you've been thinking about using one of these coupon codes that Don offers, this is the week to do it because this 15% code is amazing. Not only do you save 15% off used and new items on his website, you also get free shipping on media orders over $20 in the continental United States. So hurry over to Don's, check out some of these recommendations from the erudite magicians I interviewed, and of course, pick up that book that you've been wanting to get. So we're here with uh, Mike Caveney, and uh, Mike, I run Erudite Magic. Uh, we talk about all things magic book related, and you obviously publish some of the best books and are an expert on the subject. So our viewers would love to hear from you about some books that you recommend. Or I'm a dinosaur. I grew up learning magic out of books and magazines, so this is right up my alley. So I'll say two things. Um, 
there are so many great old magic books. There is enough magic in the world right now so that no one ever has to invent a new trick. What you do have to do is go into those old books, find a trick, you say, I like this trick, it's a good effect, it has a good, elegant method, and then figure out how you can dis, uh, change it up uh, so it um, doesn't look like the old trick, it looks like your trick. And you're done, you're in great shape. Uh, here's what, one of my favorite all-time books that I've ever uh, bought and read, The Books of Wonder, my pal Tommy Wonder. This guy, I've always said, is one of the greatest magicians of my generation, a great thinker, a great creator, a great builder. He can build anything. He built everything in his act. And he just laid it all out in those books, all of his theories, and I go back to them all the time. Uh, I just read a thing of his, it's actually, well, it's probably in the books, but I have a manuscript that he gave me on thread. And I, I use thread in my act. And I read this thing and I go, nobody knows more about or understands thread use more than Tommy. The Books of Wonder. The other thing I want to say is on a different subject, I've spent the entire pandemic writing a book on the history of sawing a lady in half. Now that sounds like a pretty limited subject, I know. But I am astonished at what this turned out to be. Uh, it is the history of magic, basically, for the past 100 years. And I mean exactly 100 years. It was 1921 when P.T. Selbit introduced his illusion, sawing through a woman, and that Horace Golden saw it his first lady in uh, Right up to all the new versions of the sawing trick that have come out, and everything in between. It's a fascinating story. I'm thrilled that it's done. It's on my website right now. I don't have the books yet. They are on a ship crossing the Pacific Ocean, uh, and, and you can read all about them on my website. And I can't wait for people to see this book. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate yeah, it. Sure thing, Jeff. So here we are with Gene Anderson, and Gene, uh, I've known Gene since I reviewed his book. Gene Anderson, the book. We interacted, and uh, several of you had very positive things to say about it. And when I saw him here at Abbott's, he's been coming a long time. I said, Gene. I'd like for you to talk to our viewers here about books that you like and spe specifically books to which you refer a lot. And so I asked him to think about it and he's come up with a response and, and I'm asked him, I've asked him to share it here. Okay. Well, this is funny, Jeff, but thanks for asking me. Well, the book I refer to the most and I'm talking about weekly is the book. It's my own book. Well, how can that be? Because there's something I got to refer to, and I either will look it on a, on a line of PDF, but mostly I just page right to it, and I tell somebody, or here's a quote, because I love quotes, and I tell them stuff, and I think of, I don't know, I'm good at connections, and so this is my most referred to book, and so that's what it is. Yeah. Thank you, Gene. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, so welcome back to all the Erudite Magic viewers. We're here with Eric Camps up here in Colon, Michigan for Abbott's 83rd Magical Get Together. And uh, Eric lectured and performed here, and I ran into him and said, hey, I talk about magic books, and I was hoping you would be able to tell us a little bit about the benefit of books in your career and maybe some of the highlights, books that you really like and recommend to uh, my viewers. Sure, it'd be my pleasure. Um, listen, you can't go wrong with Todd Bell. Todd Bell series is always a good foundation, especially if you're gonna be working on something new and you wanna go, what, what, what did these guys do back then? So if you're working on something, that's a great resource. Then I would also say, um, there's a lot of other books. Uh, of course, Greater Magic, another great book. Uh, the Art of Magic by T. Nelson Down. Um, the Pole Bearers of You, that's all bound, that L&L &L put out years ago. Some great stuff in there. But if I'm gonna tell you, you can only get one book, one, one book that I would recommend that you could read that book and have that one book and become a professional magician, that would be Stars of Magic. That book is the book to get. And it's been reprinted by my pal, Mayor Yedid. He did a beautiful job of recreating it. And it, the, the material in there holds up fine. From the Scotty material to the Tons of Vernon material in there, to uh, the Jarrow stuff, uh, the, the Art of Using the Lapis of Savant by Slydini, that's all there. Oh, and of course, Slydini Encores, another great book. 
to read it. Or, I can't stop. I can't stop. <laughs> Slidini and more, another great book. You have the Slidini stuff, the Vernon stuff, the Vernon Book of Magic. How did I forget that? That's another great book. And, uh, of course, the John Ramsey books were also very influential for me. But I've got to tell you, Stars of Magic, that's my thing. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. We're here with uh, David Williamson at Abbott's and um, asked him a little bit about books that he would recommend to our viewers, books that he found to be useful and uh, might be good for, for you guys. Well, it depends on what you're into, but my, my go-to book for everybody, you know, people ask me to give, I'm giving lessons now, but before I started giving lessons, I thought I won't be a good teacher. My idea of giving a lesson is give somebody the Amateur Magician's Handbook and tell them, call me in 20 years. That's my advice for anybody who wants to get into magic, or even if you've been in magic for a while and you haven't looked at the book in a few years. I went back through the book cover to cover recently, and there's so many good things I skipped over, and I learned some things. I'm actually working on some routines from that book uh, that I got when I was 12, and I thought I'd you know, remembered cover to cover, but I haven't. So that's my favorite book, if you're asking about books, Amateur Magician's Handbook. I just felt like he had a way of communicating. Barrows Moosey was his name. Henry Hay was his uh, um, pen name. He also wrote Learn Magic, which Mac and I were talking about today. Uh, Matt King was saying that was his first favorite book, Henry Hay's Learn Magic. Mine was Amateur Magician's Handbook. But uh, he had a way of communicating. Uh, you know, his opinions came through very strongly about how what's good, what's bad in magic, you know. But, um, yeah, there's, so, I don't know, there's a plethora of good books out there. Find one from an actual performer, not a hobbyist. Oh, wow. Hobbyists have been publishing books forever, card guys and so forth. Find out what they did for a living. Oh, you're a plumber, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you worked at the Magic Castle because you hang out there every week. Okay, so I'll, I'll put that in a certain category of hobbyist books, you know, and great thinking came out of that. I put books by actual professional performers who grinded out shows and worked in front of audiences and cut through a lot of the silliness that wouldn't work for a paying audience that the other guys don't even know exists. That's in a different category. So maybe think about books in that way. That would be a piece of advice. Well, I appreciate the advice. Thank you for your time, David. My pleasure. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Erudite Magic. We're here with Jessica Jane. You guys all know her from IBM and The Jam and several other things that you do hey. online. You've seen her perform, and we wanted to ask what some of your favorite books are that you might recommend to our viewers. Okay, so first one, my all-time favorite magic book, Inside Magic by George Watson and Robert Parrish. Amazing book. If you can find a copy, the traps will buy. It's like timing, right. timing. <laughs> if you can find a copy online, every once in a while they pop up on eight books. Amazing stories. It's like Days of Our Lives meets the Golden Age of Magic. Amazing. Um, Device and Illusion is my favorite book on tricks. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. Complete Jarrett, another one. And I just got another Robert Parrish book, Words About Wizards, and that's really, really good. I'm getting thumbs up, yeah, thumbs yeah, up. Yeah, Such a good book. So that's been my Abbott's reading while I'm here. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you for taking time to share with oh, us. Oh, for sure. And tell our viewers what kind of books they should be reading. Definitely. Thank you, thank Matt. You. <laughs> That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I had a blast interviewing these magicians. If you have other magicians that you'd like to hear from, sound off down below because in a few weeks, I'll be going to Magi Fest and I'm going to try to interview some of the people there about their experience with books and the recommendations they have for you. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving me a thumbs up so I know I'm headed in the right direction with the content and sound off down below with which piece of advice was your favorite and why. Thanks everybody for watching, and until next time, all my erudite friends, keep reading.